Indiana Jones, Indiana It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we cast a wide net over the film <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, one minute at a time. I'm Tom Taylor. And the best part? I'm Pete Mummer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gerald Christopher. Enough. I, I, by the way, we have a minute where there's a, there's a strong enough Spoken yeah. in a yeah. Harrison Ford movie, and it's not Harrison Ford yeah. saying it. As if things weren't weird enough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Porter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am Professor Christy Porter, and I'm just delighted to Yay. be here in the rec room hey. with you guys again. It's been, I don't know, like a couple it's of years. It's been too long. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. I don't even know how time is measured anymore with these yeah. sorts of things. True. But yes. Blur's day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Blur's day, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 and what better way to celebrate Blur's Day than to s- discuss minute 64 of uh, Crystal Skull, which my favorite minute. In- <laughs> is it your favorite? <laughs> it is. Well, you came to the right place. The that stinky is. tent in the, in the, in the jungle. Uh, this minute begins with Indy staring into the skull and Spalco still reciting her psycho communist manifesto. And it ends with Indy refusing to help Oxley lead them to Akator. Uh, did anybody here think that, um, you know, Mac, he, he seems to be having a moral crisis and I'm mm-hmm. wondering, did anyone think that he was going to pick up Spalco and throw her into the Death Star reactor? <laughs> 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 that would have been I mean, they, they do one of those shots. It's a close up on Mac's face and he like, mm-hmm, it's like, yeah. you know, he looks at Indy and then he's like looking at Spalco <laughs> and then he looks at, and you're like, okay. <laughs> That's so, awesome. That is. What what is happening? And 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 later in the minute, he's the one who sort of intervenes and tells Spalco, it, it's it's a little questionable. He says like, you know, uh, you know, stop it. Okay, he's had enough. And and he he says something like, well, you know, he, you know, if he's dead, he's not going to be able to help us. And you're like, okay, mm-hmm. are they trying here to get me to then be on the side of Mac again? I think they are, but I don't think it's working. Like to yes. me, I think like it feels like he's acting here. Oh, really? See, I yeah. think it's sincere, but I think it's I think it's uh, I don't I, I'm I'm I don't think they're trying to get you to be totally on his side or anything. But I do think that it's they're Depends showing that he's he's conflicted. Feeling. That this yeah. this this guy was his buddy, might still think of him as his buddy, and he's in a tight. Yes, he's turned on him, but he does want to see him hurt. But but why um, why is he concerned now if that's the case? But he wasn't when they were all pointing guns at Indy. Well, that was the beginning of the movie, and this is this is a completely different place <laughs> okay. in the movie. That, you're you're right about that. I Boy, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I I have to say no, Pete. I'm with you. I, it makes no sense. Why did see? This is where we have a problem. Yeah. Whereas you think of somebody like. Katanga for 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 a brief minute. Do you think that Katanga? <laughs> do you think that he might turn on Indiana Jones in Raiders? Yeah, that's that part of a... what makes him a magical character. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. There's yeah. a moment where you think you're like, "Oh, this guy's awesome," but I don't know him, and yeah. he's he's. We've only seen him for like a minute now, and he kind of. I remember he says something like, he says, Dr. Jones, you look exactly as I imagined or something like that. And like, that's all the only, and then he starts laughing with Sala, like, right. And you're like, wow, he might turn on Indy. He's out of there. There's, there's a question in there, maybe. And you're like that, I believe. But here with Mac, you're like, I feel like they're trying to get me to be invested in Mac again. Like they're trying to get me to be invested like I care what happens to Mac because Mac cares about Indy. So, so I I agree with Tommy because I think that Mac's conflicted here, and mm. of course, characters that are conflicted are are uh, are interesting characters. 
Um, so that would be about the best we could do here. <laughs> so he's, a, he's, he's conflicted. But, but you know, what's interesting about Katenga is um, you, you know that he's lying. You know that he's lying, but he's a very convincing lying. So he is an actor lying as if he might go. And, of course, we're all invested in Katenga. But the conflict is what makes Mac kind of, kind of interesting here, um, even if, Jerry, you weren't particularly convinced. You know, some of us, you know, would like to be convinced. <laughs> I, you put that, I mean, I think all of us want to believe. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Just... wait, Tommy, do it. Do your Katanga. Do it. Do it. Do it. I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I do want to say, I don't, I, I mean, maybe I'll rewind and find out that, that I was in on this, but I don't think I ever for a second thought that Katanga was, was a double dealer or anything or could turn no. on India. Like he was a friend of Salah's. Oh, I he, did. You know, Salah vouched for him. He was a good guy. He like there was no like hint, you know, like he he, he easily lies to the the Nazis that he killed yeah. him and that he's trying to keep Marion on the boat and stuff. And yeah, I mean, no, I remember was, it was like as a kid first seeing it and thinking when the Nazis showed up, I was like, oh, he told him. Yeah, oh, could, really? That he li- yeah. Oh, well, it could yeah, have. I mean, I'm not saying that he's. It's like there, there's maybe just a hint of it there's there's a, yeah. you know there, there's just a bit you don't you know he's introduced he's and you very know very that, smooth yeah yes. and, if, and, and yeah smooth. i think if sala hadn't introduced them that smoothness would be like oh okay what's this but guy sure. gonna get out of this marion right. also calls them pirates yeah, yeah so that that true. could be the and, and she dress. seems to trust him yeah but no, it, actually it, she I says mean, she doesn't trust him yeah, I think she says yeah, she, she yeah. doesn't true. trust him. Yeah. And there's yeah. no real reason for him to stick his neck out. Like, as far as we know, he's just a smuggler. And there's there's no real reason why he would stick his neck out against one of the most powerful nations and armies on Earth yeah. to help a guy that he doesn't know anything about. They, they yeah, even if he is a true blue friend of Salah's, yeah, once uh-huh. you're faced with a U-boat and people uh-huh. are boarding your boat, you could easily turn, yeah. Uh-huh. They, they they threaten to blow his ship up out of the water, <laughs> sure. like they threaten. And I always wonder, like, so right after they leave, is it like, you know, so they take off in a submarine, or whatever? You're kind of like, I wonder if they're gonna blow it up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like yeah. he's like, yeah. they said they never gave us an answer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, chair, I never even thought of that. They didn't blow up his ship. That would be terrible. <laughs> it would be. I mean, they did. He the says Nazis one would of the never Nazis, do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> he says something like, and then we'll decide whether or not to blow right. the ship out of the right. water. Right. Well, They're they taking Marion and they say, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was nice of them. Yeah. Um, by my calculations, we've been in this tent, in this, in this one scene <laughs> for about two months of like, you know, as we're doing the show. Yeah. And talking about Katanga for like five minutes has been so nice. <laughs> it's just been such a beautiful breath of fresh air i didn't think we were ever going to get out of this we're still in the tent but just knowing that we we could just talk about katanga for a minute i'm going to say something that's going to stifle us all again okay please i've got a i've got a moral question for all of you um excellent spalco says we will change you dr dr jones all of you from the inside we will turn you into us Mm -hmm. and my question is would you want to turn somebody into you oh like would you like to have (laughs) A thousand yeah, Christies or Toms or Jerry's walking gosh. around. Sounds like a mess. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's a lot of oh, lot man. of cars with biohazard <laughs> stickers on them. Because <laughs> that's something I would very much not want <laughs> for me. Right. That would be. So I have the op- I have the quick. opposite question, and the opposite question is: Who would you turn into if you could? Which is different. Oh, totally. Who would we different. turn into, or who would we turn other people into? Either Bo way, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Really. <laughs> like 1978. Yeah. Oh, he's got it all figured out. I got no problem with it. Oh, that, that was that was not that came right out of the, his soul too. Though. I know. Yeah. yeah. He's had that locked and loaded for 30 years. He wasn't well, waiting. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Cheryl Teagues. I mean, Jacqueline Smith. I don't know. No, but, all of these women <laughs> needed foundation garments. I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> well, if you think if you turned, as she says, you know, you turn the entire nation of 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 you know people into Bo Derek all you need is one yeah you're right. like oh, I've got a yeah. chance with at least one of one <laughs> yeah, of them's going to have a bad enough day that I've got a yeah. chance or you'd be like wow I'm cheating on Bo Derek with Bo Derek <laughs> <laughs> I finally made it how could I go wrong 
<laughs> wow. wow. But that, so people- she does make that sound, the way she says that, it does sound like we, were, like, we were starting to say a couple minutes ago or something that like, oh, she's, from her point of view, she's doing a good thing. She's, she's, she wants to turn these capitalist goons into, you know, sensible communists or something from mm-hmm. her point of view. But then the way she says it here. Yeah, this like, sounds you more evil. If you're doing a nice thing, you don't say, we're going to turn you into us. Like that's, that's nothing, but that's like, that sounds like a bad guy who knows she's the bad guy in the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, She does seem like she turned bad right here. And you won't know it. (laughs) Yeah. Right. But why is that the best part? Like, why is the best part (laughs) that you won't know it? That doesn't seem like the best part at all. Right. (laughs) There's like no victory in that. (laughs) Yeah. Like if somebody just comes over, like I'm your friend now and I love you. It's just. Don't you feel bad about it? No. No. Uh, All right. That's just a pure like Hollywood. I'm going to put this line in because it sounds good, but it means, not does it mean nothing? It means next, it means worse than nothing. It's like, (laughs) it's dumb. (laughs) It's like it never happened. We didn't win the cold war because it didn't barely happen. The other guy doesn't remember. (laughs) We never knew. Yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, Pete, as you would say, this is this is lazy madman piffle. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> it is. It's it, This is extremely <laughs> lazy writing. It's mm. like they have to have, uh, you know, this uh, nefarious madman narration. And they, they plucked it out of like, you know, Madman Musings 101. <laughs> and it's just, it, it, it doesn't work at all. You're right. Because yeah. you're like, so is she going to, like, it will turn you into us. Does she mean politically? I think she, <laughs> yeah. I think because she's been talking about like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get in the minds of your teachers and your politicians and everything is going to go our your way. See, that, sounds like it, that sounds good because, it, I mean, you may not agree with her point of view but at least it seems like that's something she believes is right and she wants people to but then here like it goes from being i want to do something good for an altruistic for the world into we're gonna like ha, 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 here's can my I, evil can plan. i ask a, <laughs> right. can i ask a question here so yeah. if if we know that that the first one was a 30s movie um mm-hmm. is this a 50s movie yeah, kind of. I mean, it's got that. It's got the whole red scare thing. This is exactly yeah. what yeah. the what what they wanted us to be afraid of was that the commies were going to get into our yeah. beds at night and mess with our minds and yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Now, can I can Which, I just tell you that 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 I was not raised in the fifties. I was raised in the good old fashioned seventies and eighties. Fine. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. my third grade teacher actually, you know, scared us about communism. Oh wow! They wait and, who. <laughs> Well, it was me, you listen, had Mrs. So. Sexton, didn't you? No, oh, no, that's that cat's out of the bag. Yes, I did. So, <laughs> so if you're listening, Mrs. Sexton, I'm sorry. She, she, but she it, totally would. No, she would yeah. totally do that. She would way do that. Uh, she, you know, so she, she, she she always wore like a navy freedom skirt. <laughs> wow, oh, that's that specific. So, so, wow. so this is a fifties. So I know that that's the theme. The theme is that, you know, it's the red scare and it's a cold war and on and on and so forth. But did they style it as a fifties movie? It doesn't feel like, I, I mean, yeah. there's nothing, it definitely feels like a movie from 2008. That's, like the, I, that's the problem. It does, like Raiders felt like it could have been a movie from the 1940s or 1930s. Yeah. And they felt at least in some ways, decreasingly yeah. less like that, but this one felt like it was a movie from two thousand eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. To me, I'm yeah. Right. Um, we have been going back and forth about not even back and forth. We're kind of all in on like this whole skull thing is confusing and annoying. And what are they going to get? What, what do they think is going to happen when India looks at the skull? And it mm-hmm. seems like he he's 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 shaking and 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 muttering and stuff. And he says, "Return." Which is like the only thing that Oxley's been saying, and it's and, and I, I've been saying this like isn't the only thing that Oxley got from the skull is that it wants to go back to Akator, and that seems to be the only thing that India's gotten. Mm-hmm. So what is the, I don't know what the point of all this was. Like like she's no. like <laughs> India's not going to go brainwash a teacher or a politician yeah. now. He just knows that the he, what he already knew was that the skull wanted to go back yeah. to Akator. Yeah. Well, is, no, he, no, is, no, I, is he is he acting here? Is he just giving them what they want and saying return? And pretending to convulse so they'll let him like free him. It does look like he's pretending. I have a hard time watching Harrison Ford well, doing this stuff. Why would That's they like want really him? Kind of weird. Why would they want him to to return the skull? Why would he? Why do they want him to say return? 
they no want one knows. Him, they want to get to Akator, <laughs> and they think that Oxley knows how to get to Akator now because he looked at the skull or whatever. But he's loony now, so he can't tell them how to get to Akator. And All now right, they have course. Indy look at the thing, so he knows how to get to Akator. But then she says, "So now you will talk to Oxley and help us get to Akator." And like, so if he, if Indy has gotten the same return message. And not gone nuts. Why can't he just take them to Akator? I mean, I know he says yet he's not going to, but still, I, I don't. None of this still. No, makes it, sense. it doesn't. I, yeah, it 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 doesn't make sense at all. First of all, why isn't? I mean, why the skull doesn't talk to her, but right. she's telling everybody, narrating the plot here, or I guess. <laughs> yeah is sort of mm -hmm. moving the story along in a way, but it doesn't make any sense. It, it didn't, the, like the skull Why didn't doesn't it turn. Make sense? She's saying, she's saying we need this in order to turn you guys into us guys. Right. With, but hold on knowing. a minute. So, so number one, Oxley's not a communist now. Yeah. There's no evidence <laughs> that it would do right. that. Yeah, 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 he, looked, all up. <laughs> he looked into the skull and he just became uh, just like a regular professor at you know, I believe you and Mary. Yeah, yeah. He just came. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it. It's the old you know pixelated. Yeah, you know how it is. The old office Lord. hours at midnight type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> that's that's oh. <laughs> and and so now he's speaking gobbledygook, and so they bring Indy in to talk to Oxley to translate what the skull had told him, but they don't have Indy ask Oxley. They put Indy in front of the skull. Mm -hmm. So now you don't right. need Oxley. But then as he's looking at the skull, she's telling, there's no mention of Akator. She's saying, you're going to look <laughs> right. at the skull so you can become a communist. Yeah. What if, what if she really does, she hasn't planned this out. She didn't know that this was going to happen and she's kind of making it up as she goes, but she can't let anybody, including the audience know that because, mm. you know, uh, she's used to being in control and, and wearing, you know, the, the communist riding pants or whatever and, 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 <laughs> and, and uh, being in charge. What do you think? See, I like that. That makes me like her. And I, I know me too. That's, yeah. I want to like her so badly. <laughs> and there are little hints that, of things that happen in this movie. Why do you want to like make her? her likable? Why? Uh, why do you want to like her? She just seems like it, a non-character to me. I want, yeah, I want some human emotion towards her, right? And if, if if that emotion was, oh my god, I thought that once we got the that the the body from New Mexico, that was going to cinch this whole thing, but that didn't do anything. Oh my god, I'm way in over my head. I've yeah. got like this army of guys in the jungle waiting for me to give I've the got, next word. I've got a, a, oh, an no. evaluation coming up. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What am I going to say? I got my follow up with Lennon on Thursday. That's I gotta, exactly. I gotta, right. I gotta, oh my god. Yeah. Now, you know what's funny though? If Indy was going to go teach in Leipzig. She could easily be a teacher in Leipzig too. Like they could be faculty <laughs> members together. Wow, yeah. love to be That's in true. that faculty meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Holy see, cow. that makes perfect sense and would be really interesting. And uh, that's the the best. Uh, explanation for what Spalco is doing that I've heard. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't think that that was George and Stevens' intention. Mm, right, yeah, <laughs> they I should agree. have asked yeah. us. They should, they should yeah. have. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You should always wait for the podcast about your movie to come out and listen to the yes. whole thing and then make the movie. Precisely. Yeah. Man, is, that would work. Let me ask you guys, is the skull malevolent towards Indy? Because, okay, mm, it's they, so. well, it's scary, right? And the music is it's scary. It's scary to us. I don't know if it's yeah. scary. To, I, I, think, I still think Indy's acting. What makes really? you think it's... Wait, okay, so I think Indy's act. No, Indy's not acting. I don't. Think the skull is not. The skull is not scary. Just pulling the camera close to the skull doesn't make it scary. <laughs> um, it's very much like which which. Oh, I'm, this is really going to reveal it, but but which which is that droid in the in the um, in the sand crawler? Oh, my favorite guy, the Death Star yeah. droid. Was he a Death Star droid? I mean, that's what the action. And he looks with the big eyes, yeah. with the big eyes, yeah. eyes right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so what if, you know, what if that's a fever dream? Oh, there you go. Oh, now I like this movie. Yeah. yeah there you go. Beautiful. Fantastic. 
Just replace the skull with that guy's head, that droid's yeah. head. There you oh, go. That's a fantastic perfect. movie. Yeah. But that's not where I was going. I was trying to answer the question. <laughs> as, but see, as that guy was kind of that guy's kind of crazy in Star Wars, so that would explain why Oxley goes crazy. <laughs> yeah. And he might just want to be re- he might want to be returned. <laughs> yeah. He wants to be returned to yeah. his uh, moisture yeah. farm. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Damn Jawas. <laughs> I was doing something. Get me back there. I got work to do. <laughs> um, I'm, as, as, I'm, I'm, as if you can tell, I'm still on the fully on the the skull doesn't actually do anything train. Yeah, um, but we get the shot of Oxley outside, outside the tent, and he meaningfully and with a Spielbergian light in his eye says, "Henry," and to, to, to make to communicate that there's something going on between Indy and Oxley right now, but uh, I'm not buying that. I'm buying that uh, he's just sitting there and it's, yeah. he's, he's addled enough that he's just recognizing Indy from before. He, oh, that guy, oh, that yeah. was Henry. Oh, that guy in the chair was tied up. That's yeah, I didn't put that together at all. I didn't think that he was saying Henry because there was some sort of connection going on. Oh, okay. Well, oh, I go. can't really get over the headbands issue. Remember the game of headbands? <laughs> yeah. And you, and you yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. I can't quite get over that, so... I, I, you they, know, were, they were going to do that next. If he did get psychic powers, they were going to play that with him and see if he could uh, <laughs> right. guess the cards and stuff. I actually think that that line is beautiful. The way that uh, he says it is one well, of the most Everything he says I is agree, beautiful. Yeah. John Hurt can't say a word without it being beautiful. I agree. And that <laughs> that's kind of one of those things that it's, it's beautiful and also... Uh, it's kind of difficult because I think Tommy, as you mentioned, man, they have just such a oh, talent here, and it's <laughs> it just it just yeah, yeah he sp- he goes Henry, yeah, and you're like oh yeah. my gosh, I couldn't do that if you gave me a thousand chances. <laughs> no, I know it's amazing. yeah, it's really you know it's yeah. really comforting, and it's it's in yeah. the middle of the jungle all of a sudden, he's yeah, like wow, something truly touched him, yeah. And, yeah, and, really uh, well yeah. And, and, uh, yet unfortunately trying to piece it all together, I'm like, I don't get this. So the skull is some conduit between them now. They're like they're skull brothers or something. They're skull brothers. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I literally tattoos. don't remember anything after this point. Cause Me I haven't seen this movie in like three years, but is, <laughs> is Oxley cured at this point or does he go back to being crazy? Oh, no, I think he goes back to being crazy. I think he's still crazy. He's just having this moment of clarity or something. Oh, okay. I wasn't yeah. sure if this made him completely sane and then... That would have been fun. Get yeah. some dialogue out of him, some character. <laughs> That'd be great. Have you guys talked about the skull um, and, and how it's constructed yet? A little bit. A little I was bit. confused about whether or not it had eyes and if its jaw can move, if it's all yeah, one solid that's, piece of crystal. That's, oh, my, okay. that's, that's my question. So... So, so then, all right. So Tom, you know, since I've, I'm, I've really followed your podcast really, really seriously well. <laughs> You're um, forgiven. Thank you. So what, so what do you, what do you conclude Tom about the eyes um, and the movable jaw? I am unclear on both of them. <laughs> in some shots, it looks like those are just empty eye sockets. And in other shots, it looks exactly like the Death Star droid on the sand crawler with mm-hmm. big bulbous yeah. eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I think uh, that's as a, for the jaw, I don't know. I think well, okay. that's a, an optical well, what if illusion. So what if he's like so, one well, of those, let me, let, like those paintings you'd see in the mall, like in the 80s, <laughs> where if you kind of unfocused your eyes, like a pattern would jump out? Oh, yeah. I see a skull, but I also see a death star. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry to interrupt, Christy. <laughs> that's okay. Because that's where I'm going. I'm going, well, not that, that, that way, but so it's an optical <laughs> illusion that sometimes they look hollow and sometimes they look like bug eyes, right? But, yeah. but really, when I looked closer, all I could get was bug eyes like the Death Star droid. So yeah. this causes a lot of problems for me. And and um, uh, the first one is, is that, that that alien can't move its eyes. Right. Right? There it's are no eyes. eyes. It's yeah. got crystal eyes. Can't move its eyes. There's no sockets, which means there's no muscles, which means this guy is always looking straight ahead. This is a problem it, for this guy. You it's got no nose. On him. How does it smell? Awful. Maybe Sorry. he smells through his fingertips or something. I don't know. Maybe a, maybe <laughs> maybe a snake only. But then you'd need a movable jaw yeah. to let the tongue out. So well, maybe because they are such powerful 
brain mental beings. They don't need to move their eyes or their jaws. They can exactly. communicate with their minds and they don't it's, they can see with their brains and that's stuff. what I was saying. That the, their mouth is a vestigial organ. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you guys still use your jaws? That's so quaint. <laughs> <laughs> really cute. <laughs> yeah, and well, that, that, that's another problem. Why all his teeth are intact. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't eat. Yeah, well, there's no like bar candy fused. bar chewing, and no, his teeth are fused. <laughs> oh, maybe yeah. Oh. Pretty sure. And also, which makes which makes the oh yeah. Well, like having your which, jaw wired what, shut. You know what? Maybe it's a grill. Oh Lord! The whole head is a grill. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe, maybe yeah, it's Jared, just ballin. It's, <laughs> it's like Dallas skull. So I, I then I thought that his skull must the skull must be very very heavy. So if the skull mm-hmm. is very very heavy because there's no eyeballs and there's no sockets, and it's certainly not like hollow bones like it's a bird. He's not a bird. So. Um, you know that then he's going to have a hard time holding this big old head up, right? Which means you he need must to use have... like your larynx to hold your head up. If that were the case, that's yeah, the opposite, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Thanks for making fun of a woman with a speech pathology. That's very oh. nice. That's just lovely. God, Pete. Thank you. Way to go. That, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that tells me that if it's too heavy, then we're going to have to have a huge body. But we know that that's not the case from the beginning. But I can't explain why this thing can hold its head up at all. Mm. But then we also have this idea that the, if those eyes are bug eyes and they're all solid and they, they and there's nowhere that light, you know, registers on them, mm-hmm. then, and they don't have any moving pieces and no irises at all and no pupils at all, then they really can't react to low light and, and strong light. And they're pretty much blind. And if they're not mm. blind, then all of them have to wear glasses. Which means oh. <laughs> they're they're alien nerds, right? And they get bullied a lot, probably from the thousands upon thousands of Bo Derricks that are <laughs> right. you know populating. Wait, I, just had a, I just had a thought from this, Christy. You remember, like when we were kids and people would get those braces where they had to have like a whole contraption around their head. Oh God, headgear. Yeah. Oh yeah, we call that headgear. Yeah, head gear. Yes, yeah. Maybe these guys had to have the reason they're magnetic is they had like a headgear that held their head up. <laughs> Pete, that Christy it. was one of those kids. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've got to be black and blue by the time she gets <laughs> yeah, out of here. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, then, Man, if they're always. It, well, you did. You had to wear the one at night that went around your back, the back of the neck, didn't you? I, I didn't get the good orthodontist. You and Mimi got the good orthodontist. <laughs> the bad orthodontist. I'm telling you. Not good. Not at all good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you got you get thrown under the under the the train you know, in third any, grade. Yeah, there couldn't be any headgear here because there's no place to put the back of it. There's no mm. literally no place to put the back of that headgear. I'm looking at it right now. Well, I was just thinking it'd go over the top. It'd be like an an umbrella head, kind of head, like one of those oh, umbrella sure. heads, and just like straight above, so it kind of lifts your head straight up, like a mm. Dr. Seuss headgear. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. It just just make it out of metal, and it'll always be lifting your head up. It yeah. can't be made out of metal because it's, well, oh, because they're magnetic now. I'm, I'm well, see, yeah. no, that's right. what's brilliant. Uh-huh. It, it, <laughs> you can go to sleep with it on and it's not going to fall off. Mm-hmm. Well, did, did, <laughs> There's so much more magnetic. Yeah. Magnetic, see? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody understands any of this. No. <laughs> hey, um, Indy punches Mac in the face and breaks his nose. And we were talking Unless like. he kicks him. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Doesn't he kick him? No, Here, help he, me well, out. no, you're forgiven for this because it's the it's the you can't you can barely see him punch him. You hear right. it, you get the Ben Burke yeah. punch, but you can it's behind that gauze that they're so into, and you yeah, can't actually see him punch him in the nose. It's yeah. a very weird cut. Yeah, it's a very weird cut, and it's it's either terrible or beautiful. I can't decide which. Right? Yeah. But we were talking about this in like, like I don't know, two or three months ago, because Indy's like, hey, as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to punch you in the nose. I'm going to break your nose. And we were talking about, oh, I bet he's going to punch his, punch him in the nose later. And I absolutely forgot this moment. I was thinking about like much later, he punches him in the yeah. nose and like the truck chase or whatever. I absolutely missed that he punches him here. I also feel like Max's response here 
goes against like if, if i feel like the movie wants us to think they've been great friends for decades mm -hmm. but max response to indy punching him seems like they, he doesn't even know him like i feel like if you know indy you know he's gonna punch <laughs> you in the nose right. at yeah this point. That's, that's true good point. that's very true his reaction should be more like Indy's, like, you know, oh, you did say you were going to punch me in the yeah, nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, what is his role here? Like, how does he have the authority to unshackle Indy? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it that's is. I mean, I guess they needed Mac to get Indy, but now they've got him. So I'm not sure why they're keeping he, Mac around. I mean, she is he like a KGB him. officer? Like, oh. just under Spalco? I don't know. Did, but was, he, he, like, was he the one who trailed indy and then let the russians know where indy was yeah maybe he's the mastermind of all this like, i'm maybe just he... saying is that why he's here i don't know why he's here i mean they, they, yeah, they maybe they... he called up spalco like at some point he's like hey this uh, let's get this guy because i bet we can get to akator he shows up in i have to i'm sh i don't know there might be like in, a one in not mexico he yeah shows he up shows in up in mexico. not mexico, <laughs> not mexico. <laughs> and then right. he actually picks him up with the with the russians when indian mutt come out of the place with the with the skull right the, those yeah he's got this cigar and the hawaiian so shirt did, on I'd have to, yeah. did he alert the russians <laughs> see is he he's looking for the city of gold mm -hmm. but uh -huh. he doesn't really care about aliens at all he's looking for no. the city of gold and it happens to be where the aliens have a timeshare on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the real Indy. Like, he's the one acting like Indy. Like, he's Indy, Indy would have used yeah. anybody in Raiders of the Lost Ark to get him to the Ark. And no, I feel like Max's going to use anybody here to get him to the to the treasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's true. after money? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's after the gold. More down, gold down, down. than you can, go. yeah. <laughs> More gold than you could, you know. And we're we're talking about this. If you had an entire city of gold, <laughs> I don't know what you could do with it. Yeah. Like you would, like you'd you'd auction I'm gonna it off. Have this appraised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you auction it, you would flood the market, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you in a way you would sort of be devaluing your own stash. It'd be mm -hmm. like the De Beers. You know, yeah. they fa they famously have like a, a tourniquet around the around the how many diamonds come out of the diamond mines and then mm -hmm. they can control the diamond spigot. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're always supposed to like plant a tree instead of buy a diamond <laughs> <laughs> ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how would you protect this city of gold? Like how would you how would you keep other people from just coming in and snapping a piece off? Yeah. Gold's well, a little first, hard to well, it's hard it's like easy to snap to off. Protect. It's easy to snap off, but it's hard to get to run away with because it's pretty heavy. Mm. Yeah. Well, first you declare yourself mayor. <laughs> yeah. And then. <laughs> and also the minister of smelting. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're in charge of like just melting everything down into, you know, handy ingots or something. I don't know. But every, if you have a city of it, like everybody's going to be pilfering behind your back. Yeah. Yeah, well, the city's not going to be there long. Yeah. Unless no. everybody's got plenty of gold because you live in a city of gold. It's a little like your Boderic thing because you'd get, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so many Boderic. How many Bodericks does a person need? Oh, Boderic again. <laughs> Getting a mo out. mocha latte. <laughs> get so tired of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, of course. You, you would completely devalue it. And all of a sudden, uh, something like, you know paper would become the new gold because mm -hmm. it's it takes so long to etch everything into gold mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right that's yeah, right that's... dear diary oh my god <laughs> three years older now <laughs> <laughs> um how do we feel about Niet? oh before we get to the Niet, i have oh, to sure. say i really like her enough like i like how angry she seems oh yeah like she seems yeah. really mad like i, li I like yeah. that and I wouldn't want to well, mess You with really want to like her, don't you, Pete? Yeah, I do. I really do. Yeah, I don't, does. but I really want to. <laughs> I feel weird not liking Kate Blanchett in a movie. Yeah. She's yeah. real good. Yeah. I'm having a hard time. Yeah. Well, I don't really mm. know what she's doing here. I no, I kind of want to I kind of want to take her aside. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kate. What are we doing? Um 
Well, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's coming in over the wire? From the largest Billy Goat Grove. She's actually regular size. Boop, boop, boop. From Mimi Porter, Esquire. Esquire. <laughs> Gruff. Um, when Indy responds, Niet, oh. has he already turned into them? <laughs> okay, that was she should brilliant. be so excited. She should be like, oh, it worked. That's brilliant. <laughs> that was easier than I thought. Yeah, really? Yeah. Wow, we didn't have to teach him anything. That's a, He's got the that's a wrap, people. <laughs> that's More porch, my please. Fa- my favorite line from this entire podcast so far. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> Man. <laughs> wow, that's the real Porter sister right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, well. That's how she went to Yale. Don't <laughs> I know it? Yeah, <laughs> we didn't go to Yale. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, everybody, that was minute 64. I think we've done it. I think one of these days we're going to get out of this tent and the movie will progress. <laughs> I don't think we are. Um, nah, you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Christy, thank you so much for joining us again. Oh, big fun. Big fun. Bring you out of your semi-retirement for this minute. What? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just cover the fact that you never invite me anymore, but all right. Oh, that's true. (laughs) (laughs) Part of the problem is we we never record anymore. Yeah. (laughs) There's a pandemic, you hear? It's in all the papers. (laughs) Um, But everybody, I'm not going to do all the plugs this time. You know where to go, but you should go there and join us in all those places. But most importantly, you should come back here next week for Minute 65 of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull right here on the Indiana Jones Minute. I'm going to go look up uh, what a freedom skirt is now. (laughs) You're going to go look up a freedom skirt? That's not very nice. Just stand into the bleachers. Wow, talk about a third grade line. <laughs> Bam. <laughs>